coffee break collection 16 crime this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org office for victims of crime by the us department of justice april 1993 the office for victims of crime ovc is one of five agencies within the office of justice programs u s department of justice since it was established in nineteen eighty five o v c has served as the federal government's focal point for all issues affecting our nation's crime victims this role translates into a broad offering of programs and activities designed to help crime victims cope with personal and financial devastation resulting from victimization with the enactment and subsequent amendments to the victims of crime act voca of nineteen eighty four as amended ovc was given responsibility for administrating the crime victims fund brackets fund and brackets the primary financial resource for all federally supported victim programs this unique funding vehicle is the embodiment of legislative justice in the sense that fund deposits for crime victims consist of fines special penalty assessments and forfeited appearance and bail bonds paid by defendants convicted of federal crimes ovc's programs do not rely on the availability of tax dollars nor will funding for these programs ever increase the national debt rather federal funding for rape crisis hotlines shelters for battered women therapy for abused children and for direct costs such as medical expenses not covered by insurance comes from the pockets of kidnappers bank robbers drug dealers and other predators convicted by u s attorneys across the country through federal fiscal year nineteen ninety two over nine hundred million dollars has been deposited in the crime victims fund and made available for crime victim services grant programs the office funds a variety of formula and discretionary grant programs throughout the country formula grant program approximately ninety to ninety five per cent of the crime victims fund is annually awarded to the states and territories for the crime victim compensation and assistance formula grant programs each program is funded at about the same dollar amount ovc's state compensation and assistance division is responsible for awarding the formula grants and ensuring that the funds are expended for their legislated purposes crime victim compensation program state administered crime victim compensation projects help victims and survivors of homicide victims cope with harsh financial realities left in the wake of crime commensurable expenses include medical expenses costs for mental health counseling lost wages and funeral expenses in some states costs for eyeglasses corrective lenses dental service and prosthetic devices are also covered the value of this program far exceeds the dollar and cents award amounts to victimized citizens who have incurred compensable expenses one survivor of a homicide victim who has awarded state compensation for loss of support and funeral expenses recently described the heart of this formula grant program as follows to the crime victim compensation board i'd like to thank the oklahoma crime victim compensation board for anything it might award me when i received the five hundred dollar advance i cried the relief was great the bills are quite frightening to someone who has never been alone i went from childhood to marriage and motherhood so i've never had to deal with the perils of life by myself 
it's just amazing how much it costs just to exist even if i don't receive another penny i'm glad someone cares about the families of victims because in reality we have died too we just haven't been buried yet compensation award amounts to the states are equal to forty per cent of the amount each state distributes in compensation during the prior fiscal year thus federal dollars are used to reinforce each state's proven commitment to providing compensation to crime victims as part of the grant award process ovc applies certain minimum eligibility requirements for example the state projects are required to compensate victims of federal crime as well as victims of drunk driving and domestic violence the states however have great discretion in determining their own application procedures and approval criteria and in setting their own minimum and maximum award amounts the crime victim compensation program is an excellent example of a state and federal partnership that works all states and territories with the exception of one participate in this program crime victim assistance program the victim assistance program addresses a wide variety of victim needs the program makes it possible for victims to attend court hearings by funding the provision for babysitting and transportation services the program provides victims of domestic violence with shelter when due to safety concerns they are forced to leave their homes it provides abused children with professional therapy the assistance program furnishes lifeline services to victims at a time in their lives when their sense of reality security and physical well-being is abruptly shattered of those grants awarded for assistance in 1991 over 12 percent funded services for child abuse victims over 21 percent funded services for domestic violence victims nearly 14 percent funded services for sexual assault victims and over 10 percent supported the provision of services to underserved victims of violent crimes such as survivors of homicide victims victims of drunk driving crashes etc these areas of funding concentration are consistent with voca mandated funding priorities for ovc currently one-third of approximately seven thousand providers of victim assistance throughout the country receive voca funding they are located in churches hospitals law enforcement agencies mental health associations social services agencies and prosecutors offices the voca funding awarded to the state grantees is distributed at the state level through subgrants to direct service providers while the states must comply with certain minimum funding requirements they retain great control over the selection of applicants for funding each state and territory receives a formula award base amount of two hundred thousand dollars plus additional distributions based on population size and the total amount available for the assistance program in the crime victims fund discretionary grant programs the purpose of the discretionary grant program is to improve the quality and enhance the availability of victim services as a discretionary grant funding priority ovc reaches out to isolated underserved victim populations in dire need of assistance such grants have initiated victim assistance programs on remote indian reservations and have made services available to sexually exploited children discretionary grants also provide training and thereby improve the quality of services rendered by providers of victim assistance ovc training and technical assistance programs explore emerging issues in the field they also initiate and expand victim services within criminal justice system components the discretionary grant programs are administered within ovc by two office divisions the federal crime victims division 
and the special projects division the federal crime victims division trains federal criminal justice system personnel and develops programs to handle victims whose cases are handled within the federal criminal justice system specific projects administered by this division include emergency service fund a special fund created to address the need of victims of federal crimes when local resources are unavailable victim witness coordinators from the 93 u.s attorney's offices access the fund in emergency situations involving victims and witnesses services financed through this fund include travel to facilitate participation at trial emergency shelter and counseling services assistance for federal victims of crime in indian county grant program a program to establish a permanent network of culturally responsive crime victim assistance programs in native american communities that are located on federal land areas children's justice act discretionary grant program for native americans a program designed to improve the investigation and prosecution of child abuse in indian country so as to limit additional trauma to victims training and technical assistance for federal officials a continuous effort to train federal prosecutors law enforcement officers witness victim coordinators and corrections officials on formulating effective responses to the rights and needs of crime victims the special projects division like the federal crime victims division designs discretionary grant programs to facilitate a comprehensive high quality provision of victim assistance throughout the country specifically this division has administered programs to provide victim assistance to sexually exploited children transported across state lines for illicit purposes support the investigation and prosecution of child abuse throughout the country advance victim awareness of civil legal remedies against perpetrators provide services to address the needs of specific populations such as hispanic victims and victims of bias crimes and enhance the provision of victim services by specific types of social service professionals such as mental health professionals and the clergy the special projects division demonstrates its ongoing commitment to implement the recommendations set forth in the president's task force on victims of crime 1982 final report by working to institutionalize an awareness of victim rights among criminal justice system professionals ovc sponsored training and technical assistance projects are now available to law enforcement officers judges probation and parole officers and prosecutors throughout the country these projects serve to introduce crime victims to criminal justice system professionals as parties of interest who have legitimate concerns deserving of due attention and an effective response non-grant related leadership efforts the office undertakes numerous activities designed to focus public attention on crime victim needs and to advance crime victim rights staff members routinely participate in regional public speaking engagements and skills workshops on victim issues in addition ovc annually hosts an event during national crime victims rights week to honor the accomplishments of outstanding victim advocates in recent years selected award recipients have been honored by the president attorney general and director of ovc at white house rose garden ceremonies with respect to federal legislation ovc plays a key role in monitoring and facilitating federal agency compliance with statutory mandates affecting victims the victim witness protection act of 1982 
was the first piece of federal legislation to articulate certain services and minimum rights that should be afforded to crime victims the nineteen ninety crime control act subsequently outlined the federal government's responsibility for addressing the statutory rights of victims participating in the federal criminal justice system specifically title v the victims rights and restitution act of nineteen ninety is a bill of rights that directs each u s agency engaged in the detection investigation or prosecution of crime to identify victims of crime and provide specified services title two the victims of child abuse act of nineteen ninety enables the federal criminal justice system to adapt judicial procedures to address the unique needs and abilities of child victims and witnesses through its federal crime victims division ovc monitors federal agency compliance with such statutes and reports to both the attorney general and congress regarding the status of victim and witness treatment within the federal criminal justice system ovc is also responsible for coordinating department of justice training programs to implement the statutory mandates conclusion ovc plays a pivotal leadership role in the victims movement the office supplements reinforces and encourages an expansion of state compensation and assistance programs throughout the country voca funding is used by the office for victims of crime to reach out to isolated often neglected populations of victims such as sexually exploited children and victims residing on remote indian reservations the office also awards grants to sponsor high quality training and technical assistance on cutting edge substantive issues of interest to victim advocates as well as to criminal justice system personnel who regularly interface with victims these efforts are funded through ovc's formula and discretionary grant program ovc's leadership role at the federal level also encompasses activities designed to draw public attention to crime victim needs and to promote victim rights through legislation and public policy in short the office for victims of crime embraces a multi-dimensional role at the federal level as an advocate for crime victims for additional information please contact office for victims of crime 633 indiana avenue Northwest, Washington, D.C., 20531, 202, 514, End of Office for Victims of Crime by the U.S. Department of Justice, April 1993. Coffee Break Collection 16. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reading by Matt Perard. On the Scent by Harold Austin Ripley. I couldn't wait to be announced, said George Collins, Florida's foremost prohibition agent and a great wit, as he stepped into the professor's office how long are you going to be in new york asked fordney as the two friends shook hands i'm due back in miami now replied collins but i wanted to congratulate you on your success in the hicks murder case i wish interesting things like that would happen in my game however i did have an amusing experience last december sneaky joe a stool pigeon tipped me off to a huge still he said was working about forty miles from headquarters a narrow road through dense woods led to the spot arriving there i found an old dilapidated shanty screened by trees as i entered the woods i smelled alcohol sneaky joe was right after all i thought as i drove up to the shanty i got out and peered cautiously around but the place seemed deserted 
after opening the door and entering the house however i knew liquor was not being made there i searched the woods but found nothing as i was driving back along the road at a good rate i discovered the alcohol i smelled was coming from my own radiator imagine my chagrin the professor laughed heartily and said to his friend stay over for my birthday party to-night the ladies would love to hear that yarn of yours what did the professor find preposterous in collins's story answer on the scent not even a prohibition agent would use alcohol in an automobile radiator in or about miami the oil and wine of merry meeting irving End of on the scent by harold austin ripley coffee break collection sixteen crime this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the perfect crime by h a ripley peter johannes had one burning ambition to commit a perfect crime after much thinking and careful planning he chose burglary for his experiment and a large brownstone mansion for the scene of his action learning its occupants had left town he arrayed himself in a business suit of conservative cut flung a light top coat over his arm picked up a gladstone bag covered with foreign labels and set out he had ascertained of course when the policeman patrolling that beat was farthest away at such a time he drove up in his swanky sport roadster swung jauntily to the sidewalk skipped up the steps and fitted a skeleton key into the lock which yielded easily so far so good he thought inside he adjusted a black mask to his eyes and silk gloves to his hands the former for a bit of local colour he couldn't resist the latter for more practical purposes what a jolly thing this burglaring was he quickly filled his gladstone with silver and other valuables hurrying out he removed his gloves after closing the door done and not a single clue left he said to himself as he was about to descend the steps he saw out of the corner of his eye the policeman rounding the corner feigning disinterest he quickly pushed the bell button and stood there whistling hey you shouted the policeman now standing at the bottom of the steps what are you doing there them people ain't home howdy officer how goes it said our hero blithely as he turned to greet the blue coat i know they're not home been trying to raise someone for five minutes annoying too after running out to see them oh well he continued i'll be going along as he unconcernedly picked up his bag you bet you will right to the hoosco bellowed the guardian of the peace your story i might have believed but come on now i'm taking you down alas for the perfect crime what caused our hero's arrest asked professor fordney of his class alas peter johannes had forgotten to remove his mask on leaving the house whoever thinks a perfect work to see thinks what ne'er was nor is nor e'er shall be pope end of the perfect crime by H. A. Ripley